Hi, Noah here. It's been a while since the last video, but I've been spending a lot of time working on this new pixel art game. This is Chef RPG. It's an open world game where you are a chef, you manage a restaurant, gather ingredients and recipes, and foster relationships with the townsfolk in order to create your own unique culinary story. The goal for this game is that you have a lot of choices of how you play the game, although the main goal involves running a restaurant, the player can spend their day gathering ingredients, hunting, exploring, or socializing. Each activity would have its own benefits. The game is set in a sci-fi future with some cyberpunk themes. I'm planning to create two areas in this game and give each its own unique backstory. This is a section of the first area, which is a small seaside town. It's a more traditional community where the residents haven't fully embraced technology, but technology is slowly creeping its way into the town despite the residents' protests. The other area will be a high-tech metropolitan city, which has a food industry that is ruled by major corporations. Each area will have multiple restaurants to run, and the gameplay will differ depending on the area in terms of difficulty and the availability of different ingredients. I've been working on this game for 7 weeks, so it's still very early in development. Just for reference, I've spent around 3 weeks on the art and 4 weeks on the coding. Since this is a large game and it's an RPG, my strategy is to build up the base systems right away as well as possible. This means that it will take a bit longer before I can start creating the main gameplay, but I think it will save more time in the long run. I started first with setting up the player UI and inventory. Currently there are separate compartments for storing equipment, tools, and usables, which I think will help the player be a bit more organized while playing. If you look here, you can quickly swap between tools without opening up the inventory again, which I thought would be a bit more convenient for the player. You can eat some of the ingredients, which adds some energy. However, ingredients are primarily used for cooking. Also, throughout the game, you can find equipment of either common, rare, epic, or legendary rarity, which offers unique stat bonuses and abilities. There are four stats currently, which are endurance, cooking, gathering, and business. I'm thinking of adding subskills under these primary skills, so an equipment that improves gathering will improve all gathering subskills like hunting and fishing. I created some sample equipment here which improves certain stats. Eventually, I will have to add animations to all the equipments so that you can actually see what you are wearing. That's why the character is half naked right now, so don't worry, he'll get some clothes eventually. Right now, none of the other tabs have anything except for the loading and saving tab. So now I'll show you the restaurant first. This is your player's restaurant, which will be upgradable as you progress in the game. I don't want just the size increase when you upgrade, but there will be branching restaurant upgrades that will take your restaurant in a different gameplay direction. For example, one kind of upgrade would benefit serving casual pub style food, while the other would be towards serving high-end food. One option would not necessarily be better than the other, but it would change your gameplay experience and the type of ingredients and equipment you would need to collect. That's just one of the examples I'm thinking of. There may be an option where the restaurant doesn't serve any food at all, but these are ideas that probably won't be implemented anytime soon. So you start with an empty room and you can decorate and plan out your restaurant however you like. I've implemented a furniture placement system and a build mode UI that lets you quickly cycle through your furniture options. Now, when you play the game, to get more furniture, you can buy them at certain shops or create them from blueprints to obtain really unique pieces. Currently, I only added a couple basic kitchen appliances like a stove, oven, ice cream maker, and a blender. And I'll quickly break down how I implemented this uh, furniture placement system. The furniture pieces are stored in an inventory as a scriptable object. This contains all of the data relating to the furniture pieces and allows me to save and load the pieces. When I select the piece of furniture that I want, it first exists as a fake object that follows my mouse around and displays where I can place the object. When I click to place the object, the fake object is destroyed and the real furniture object is instantiated into the scene. The reverse happens when I pick it up and return it to the inventory. The real object is destroyed and instantiates a fake object, which follows my mouse around. When I click on the chest, the fake object is destroyed and returns the scriptable object to my inventory.
Now you can probably do this without the false object in the middle, but the script structure would need to be a little different. Now I haven't gone to scripting the cooking gameplay yet. I still need to set up a couple more UI systems and AIs for the restaurant gameplay to be fully operational. So I've implemented a day-night system as well as four different seasons. Eventually, these factors will affect the availability of ingredients and the availability of different activities. I know normally you don't want to jump into this kind of polish early on, but I thought it was important to do so since I needed to figure out a system for doing lighting and post-processing. I thought that deciding this system early on was important since it will affect how I set up the sprites in the future. For the day-night cycle, I use Unity's Universal Render Pipeline since it's just easy to use. I also tried out Unity's post-processing stack, but I really didn't like it and I think it's more useful for 3D games. All of the lights are connected to the game clock, so near nighttime they turn on and after midnight all of the lights turn off except for the street lamps, which turn off at 4am. For the seasons, I used uh, sprite swapping instead of any post-processing. And here's a little berry bush animation I created. Uh, if you walk into it, the berries pop out and you can pick it up. The berries respawn after a while, so it's kind of fun to mess around with the berry bush. Uh, here's a quick look at the beach. I'm pretty happy with the water animation I made here, which is all done in Photoshop. There are some little parts that are a little weird, and I'll make some fixes uh, in the future when I come back for polish. I might add some water splashing on the cliffs or some kind of animation like that. Eventually, you'll be able to collect some ingredients on this beach as well as do some fishing. During the different seasons, sunrise and sunset times are different, so you would get more sun during the summer and less during the winter. This will probably impact the gameplay in some way, maybe the difficulty of gathering ingredients will be increased during the winter. Over here, there's a 24-hour bubble tea shop which is manned by an android. Since this is a game set in the future, I really wanted to incorporate android characters. My goal is that you can also choose to play as an android, which may give you certain advantages and disadvantages. For example, you could start with better endurance and gathering skills, but you could also have a harder time developing relationships with the townsfolk. If you keep going to the right, I'm planning to create a large market and port. This area would be super important for the restaurant gameplay since the market is where you would go every morning to buy ingredients. And I was thinking of having a system where um, the ingredients change every single day, so you'd have to go into the market every day and see what's new. And then every day you would change the menu of your restaurant to adapt to the availabilities in the market. The port would also offer some special activities like the ability to go on fishing trips and catch rare fish. So here there's a beehive on this tree. Eventually you would need a tool to extract it, but right now if I just press a button it falls down. I guess I have to add some bees to it eventually, because right now it looks like a pineapple. And when you pick it up, uh, you get a jar of honey. Finally, let's take a look inside your house, which will be upgradable. It's empty right now, so I'll just plop down some furniture. I also added a standing shower, which is kind of fun to mess around with. The player can take a shower to recover energy. Don't know, I wanted to give the player a bit of the real life living experience. Here's a look at the winter version of the map. I was debating whether or not to do a winter scene since it does add a lot more extra work. Um, some of the sprites would eventually need to be redrawn to include snow, but I think it just looks and feels really nice and I think it offers the option for some winter activities, so I decided to include it, even if it's a bit extra work. 
Yeah, so that's the progress so far. There are a couple more UI systems I need to implement before I can start creating the main gameplay. My goal is to set up all the game systems first so that I pretty much have a fully functional game inside this first map. Then at that point, I can just add content, which is the day I'm definitely looking forward to. That's the fun part since I'll get to design areas and create stories and activities. Um, so that's it for now. Uh, I will try to create a devlog every uh, two to three weeks. So please like and subscribe if you want to see more updates. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.